Sunday bites and tidbits with Chef Pepe and Tara. This life they'll help you live it and get yourself together. Sunday bites and tidbits. Hey everyone! Another show. I'm so excited about today's show. You know we have. We met this gentleman a while ago, and um, he's become like family to us, family yes. to me. Um, but you know, what we want to kind of start off talking about is habit forming. Oh my god! You know, 2022 and 2021 and 2020, we could just keep going on down. How many times have people <laughs> at the at the start of a new year go, this year, this is what I'm going to do. On, as soon as January 1st comes, I'm going to start doing this, 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 this. I know. And what happens, Babette? They fall right off. They fall. Kaboom, right. bam, hit the head on the If concrete. they even ever start. If they even ever start. <laughs> or they start and they go, you know what? I'm going to wait till February because I got to get this. Yeah. Especially, especially when it's food related. I'm going to wait till February because I got to get this stuff or out the, of my system. Or the big workout. The big yeah. workout, right. Well, I did a couple of crunches. I'm sore now. So you know what? I'm going to wait till next week when my body heals. <laughs> exactly. Itself. So today we're going to talk about habit forming. You know, and how, you know, the, the, the title for this show is called You Created It. And, oh. and we're going to talk to someone who, I mean, his story, number one, is phenomenal. Number two, he tells you about how we create our destiny. And just because you're 50 plus, because we, yeah, are, we are, doesn't mean that you cannot make changes in your life. Right? Well, you know what it is? I think what, what we forget is that we cannot, we really cannot blame anybody outside of us for where we are in our journey. Mm -hmm. It's all because of us. Yes, yes. And that is basically what you're talking about. Right. And and being consistent, if you're going to go ahead and lock yourself into something, you have to practice consistency. Nobody is going to get it done for you. Nope. Well, I, I wish we had people to lift our legs and do crunches for me <laughs> or do all the crunches and then take, <laughs> what if, wait a minute, then take the abs and put it on you and go, okay, there you there go. You Look go. how nice they are. What about somebody to walk those 9,000 steps for you when you go do I those know, stairs? You know, no, it ain't going to happen. Nah. And, and, and it's harder as you get older yes. because the habits that we've created by ourselves and for ourselves, you know, the work level that it takes to reverse that. Yes. It's almost like you sound too old. What's the point now? You know, I'm, I'm on my way out. It's like, you're not out till you're out. Yeah. We give the give up excuses. Yeah. Oh, uh, forget it. No. So we are very, 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 very excited okay. today because we have our guest, Charles Silk Dunn. I'm so excited. And we want to share a little bit of his poem. You created it. Yes. You, 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 you. Act like you was tossed into your life as some kind of spectator. When you've been the boss of your life and the dictator. All that good luck, bad luck, coincidental things. Oh, it's a fluke by chance or humbug. No such thing. Only a sequence of events that the uninformed mind just couldn't explain. You see, we spin out of the invincible something like how them tornadoes spin out of hurricanes. And it's almost irrefutable that we created our own pains from things that are tailor made by words and thoughts and things to the universe that's connected to our subconscious. Not even our speech is a fling. You see, it's on the same frequency. It's not divided. It clings. And our thoughts, words, and deeds are all electrical entities that attach themselves to similar energies and then they form reality cluster we hurt ourselves when we frequently put bad energy into the universe delinquently causing our life to lack luster something happens in your life i say well you created it you say no i didn't i say you must have because situations in your life just don't happen you've sold it either by design or default your future you molded when all them secrets come back don't get mad because you told it when them people call you about their money don't get stressed because you owed it you see ah, I love <laughs> I love it. It. and you know what else you got to watch the rest you of it. So really you really do. At the end, you got to check out his links because it is very uplifting and very, very empowering. It's and true. And you know what? Let those words resonate with you. You know how many it's times so when the bill collectors call, you act like you're going to be mad at them mm -hmm. when you do old it. Anyway. I love it. I want to welcome our guest. We'd Please. like to welcome We'd our guest, like Charles Silk Dunn. Mr. Charles uh, he Silk is a speaker, an author. 
who was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison for being the youngest kingpin. And what he did while in prison and with his life and the lives of so many others is just beyond fabulous. Yeah, we can't wait for him to yeah, tell you his story. Yeah, his story's remarkable. Yeah, Welcome, Charles. Hey, how's everybody doing? We're doing good. How are you, darling? Yeah, I'm so excited to see you guys, man. Thank you, first of all, for inviting me on uh, you guys' show. And y'all's energy, I was just so uplifted just at how y'all both came on the show. I was like, that's what I'm talking about, high vibration. Well, we trying to be like you. Come on, you know us, Charles. <laughs> yeah, we trying to be like you. We trying to be like you, Charles. I'm loving man. the shirt. I know. I love the colors. You know, man, like, oh, want to oh, put thank on. you. Thank you. A lot of them don't wear just... pink. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Sure, hey, but wear pink. yes, ma'am. When when so, when you're confident about who you are and uh, what you go. you can wear, you make the clothes. The clothes don't make you. Don't make you. There yeah. you go. So tell us, tell us a little bit about your backstory for those who don't know you. Okay, well, uh, at 22 years old, uh, I was charged with charge called CCE, controlling criminal enterprise. Um, um, the nickname for it is called Joy Kingpin. I was charged with that and uh, went to trial and received a 30 year bid. And um, it was such a, a awakening for me because a lot of people that I had heard about or stories that I've read about now I'm in jail with these guys. And uh, it was such, whew, such a school for me. Uh, I've never seen so many men that were broken, uh, men that didn't have re a relationship idea. Like what I what I learned going to prison is that we as men are not taught about uh, uh, relationships. We're taught to be a provider and a protect. Like don't let nobody steal your bike. This is your territory, and you know what I mean. But as far as relationship skills, most of us have none. And I, I saw so many people, uh, sis, that uh, were just feeling broken and wanted to commit suicide and living lives of regret and the whole woe is me energy. And it was only through the grace of God that I just didn't feel that way. Uh, something clicked inside of me and I wanted to do something about it. So uh, I started helping people, first of all. Uh, people that didn't have a GED, I helped guys to uh, get the GED and go on to take college courses. And then I realized that that wasn't enough. Uh, sometimes we get caught up in the scholastics of the world, the the mm -hmm. technical aspects of the world, and thinking, oh, we need degrees, and you know, we need this, and we need that. But actually, that's just fluff. That's just the icing on uh, the cake. You have to get down to the real subject matter. You have to reconnect with your emotional identity. You got to uh, uh, connect with, you know, uh, family and, 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 and really the things that help shape and mold how you see life. And one of the things that I had told so many people is that sometimes you got to stop doing what you were taught to do long enough to discover what you were born to do. Because the momentum of what you're doing is going to run away with your life. Like everything you do builds momentum for the next thing you do. And everything you don't do builds momentum for the next thing you won't do. Like the people who make up excuses why they didn't work out Monday and Tuesday, then guess what? It's easier for them not to work out Wednesday and Thursday because they made up excuses Monday and Tuesday. For people like you guys, it's like oxygen. It's like, no matter how you feel, what you're going through, you like, this has to be done or I'm going to stop breathing. So you guys be sure that you bite down on it and you get it done. And what I try to tell people, have you ever stopped? Have you ever seen a ball stop rolling halfway down a hill? And the answer to that is no, because the momentum of your life will run away with you. And I love what you guys were saying about habits. Because it is about recreating your habits. Because you can be, <laughs> I tell people this, and I'm going to answer that question, but I want to say this for, uh, for the people that are watching your show. When you're in a bad relationship, you're caught up twice. First of all, you're in love or love the person that you're with. And then the person has become a habit. Mm -hmm. See, talking to them 
picking up the phone. So now you're fighting two things. You're not just fighting your feelings for the person. You're fighting the habit of every day I get off work at six or seven o'clock, I got to see this person yeah, or I got to call this person. Yes. That's so Wait a minute, hold on. That's, that's more than anything. More than anything. It's habitual. <laughs> it's habitual. And, and 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 not to cut you off, but keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. So keep, keep going. So keep going. So so what I realized is I got away from just trying to help people learn how to read and write. And I say, hey, let's talk about some core values. Let's talk about your emotional identity. Let's talk about love, relationships, habits. Uh, what habits you've created. And what I found out was that these things were way more important than learning how to read and write. Mm -hmm. So it's so deep because once people got that part together, mm -hmm. then they went back and went and got the GED by yes, themselves. See? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, so let me, let me, I don't want to stop you because, you know, <laughs> we can talk for hours. We don't have hours, unfortunately. So we already were talking about falling back on habits and, what does one do, like, especially when you start hitting 40, 50, and this show is for the for the 50 plus, you know, people who are trying to either redefine themselves or people who feel like they cannot mm -hmm. redefine themselves at this point because, well, it's just too late. You know, I'm on my way out. So what does one do when that happens? Because it's, you know, what, what would you suggest to, to like okay. some of the men so and women out there, especially to the men, because we were talking earlier, not to cut you off, about mental illness with men. And a lot of black men, you know, we, they're taught, you know, we don't go to therapy. We don't get counseling. We don't talk. You gotta talk, be strong. You know, you gotta be strong. Men don't cry. Like, shit, because there's a lot of 50-year-olds who now I'm finding, especially being back are out broken. here, are broken. And those <laughs> habits, those those childhood pains that they never addressed is running their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to see when you're sitting back going, and I don't even know how to help you here. Right. The fastest way to change your life is to change the company you keep. Uh -huh. See, see, this is where That's it true. gets deep at. If you're around people that are programmed in the direction that you're already going, there's no possible way that they can help you redirect your energy. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about getting therapy, when you talk about getting with a chef by bed. This is a good point. If you will just engage in conversation with you or chef by bed, if you will just once a week say, I'm going to commit myself to just going to the gym and just watching them work out. You don't even have to commit to working out because what you're trying to do, you're trying to shift the energy. And you didn't get that way overnight, and it's not going to happen overnight. But what you have to do, you have to redirect and then execute. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I listen to people and say, oh, on January 1st, I'm going to start working out. And this is, no, <laughs> no. If you think, now this is going to be terrible that I'm going to say this, but I want you to let me finish it. People do not realize how strong habits are. And people believe that they could just wake up and change a habit. And I'm not saying you can't. But please believe me when I tell you that it is going to take a collective consciousness, a collective e effort. And the only way that you're going to be able to start to redirecting that energy is you're going to have to change your mathematics. So let me get into what that is. Briefly, everyone around you has made a contributing mathematics into being the person you are today, good or bad. Cousins, neighbors, school teachers, gym teachers, coaches, uh, actors, actresses, best friends. So now, if you don't like, now this is where it gets deep at, you are the sum of your equation. Right now, we all are the sum of the equation. That means everyone that has contributed in our lives has had some kind of mathematical input in us. Now, so let's say right now you are 172, just for the sake of that number. Now, if you don't like something about yourself, 
if you're going forward, you can't keep the same equation and change the sum. You can't keep the same friends, the same people you talk to, the same people that invest in you if you want to change 172. So what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to, this way it gets good at, spend less time with certain math and more time with new math because you're trying to change the sum of your life. Yes, that don't mean that still ain't your best friend, that ain't your buddy, and, you know, y'all grew up together. And what is so terrible, I tell people all the time, this is going to sound really bad, but please listen to this with your heart and not your ears. People spend too much time with people that they cannot use. Now, oh, listen wow. to this. Oh, my. Yes. Deep. Listen to this now. It's about to get deep. Come people, on, Come on. people, people run from that word. Oh, he, oh, he used me. Uh, you okay? Listen, when you got a car that don't have gas and don't have tires in it, you send it to the junkyard. If you got an ink pen that no longer has ink, right? Then you throw it in the garbage can. If you got a pencil that you can't write with it, you break it and send it somewhere else. So everything in existence must justify its existence. When it no longer justifies its existence, it begins the process of removing itself out of existence. So what you have to realize is this. If you got people in your life that you cannot use, if they don't add value to your life, then you have to spend less time with them. It is okay to use people. You just don't misuse people. See, that is the key. You have to surround yourself with people that add value to where you say you're going. So when you ask, how do you change your life? How do you change your, your habits? You have to go get a fitness coach, a therapist, because you got to go surround yourself with somebody that's going where you want to go because the sum of your equation is sticking you where you at. Mm -hmm. So you can't possibly go into tomorrow with the same mathematics as yesterday and think your sum is going to change. Wow. You know, you know, we, we, we just give yeah. him a <laughs> well, Okay. We got to get you a show on vital C. Yeah. That's all. You got to, you got to. Okay. Vital C people. Charles needs a man show. Yes, he does. Okay. But <laughs> all that aside. You know, that's fine. One of the things that, you know, I do when we do in some of the workshops, I do this thing called rewriting your script and redesigning your blueprint. Because mm. what we're doing is we're right. We've written these. We brought these characters into our lives and we keep playing out the same production, looking at it, going, I don't like these people. Why do they keep doing this? <laughs> write them out. You write them. And then, you know, really, if you sit back and watch your life as a production, as a play, if you didn't like this show, you would leave. You'd be like, I don't even Ooh. like this. I don't like the way you, but we have that opportunity to rewrite that script. It's and your go, play. It's your play. <laughs> and think of, you know, we also think of, think of those habits as they are, they are addictions. Yes, we are addicted to we the are. behavior. We are. And it's yeah. no different. Yes. You know, people say, oh, she's addicted to drugs. Well, you're addicted to you. You're addicted to that thing. And it's Max. no different than taking an outside drug and putting it into your body, so it gives you the same kind of pleasure. Your habits give you the same kind of pleasure as taking in a drug. Go ahead. I love Can it. I add something to that? It's so amazing that you said that. So let me tell you something. We are all have a different uh, 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 amount of chemicals that go into our body that causes us to function, Me meaning this. Some people do not get it that at the end of the day, we create the chemicals that causes the feelings. So here's a good example. So emotions, right, create chemicals, and, and chemicals is what propels our body during our day. So get ready for this. Some people don't even realize, sis, that they're addicted to complaining, that they're addicted to yelling. See, what is it's chemicals, every word, every word connects to an emotion and emotion releases chemicals. So if you're a complainer and a whiner, you may not realize this, but you're a complainer be like, girl, dang, man, this is terrible. Girl, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck. Have no luck and at man, all. Man, I'm telling you. And, and people are, and people don't really realize this, but you are addicted 
to that. Like what I try to tell people, I had to use the sex uh, analogy. I say, listen, you just like somebody can get on the phone and somebody that's your mate and say whatever they say that triggers you to be aroused to them. You or somebody can get on the phone and disrespect you, right? And you're going to release all this adrenaline and rage because you're upset and you, you feel disrespected. You see how these words, from these words, these emotions came and then chemicals were released. Well, each one of us, each one of us are addicted to the chemicals that, that we go with every single day. You guys are addicted to working out. You're addicted to eating healthy. You're addicted. And that's a fact. Now, listen, people are also, people do not realize this. People are addicted to being abused. They are addicted to being yelled at. Yes. They are yes. addicted to eating the wrong foods. And it is just like a drug. So it is a drug, matter of fact. So I shared that because you are 100% correct. It's deeper than what people realize. Like, put it this way. I say this and then I'll let you. If every day you got to have a coffee a orange, a shot of gender, and walk around the block once, right? That activity releases chemicals into your bloodstream. Now, whether or not you know it or not, if you don't do that every single day, you're going to feel off balance. Mm. So people that get up and yell, if y'all don't hurry up and clean up that room and get on the bus, I'm going to beat y'all tail. When you are a yeller, that's a learned behavior. That yes. too is emotional. That too releases chemicals. So you got to look at all of your chemicals that you release into the bloodstream. Not just not just the drugs, the ones you say, the ones you take in mm -hmm. to your spirit. Because if you're used to being abused and criticized, you have people, I know this sounds crazy. You have men and women that don't think you love them unless you put your hands on them or you call them out of their name. That's, you know, you, once you get you, mad at them, then they know that you love them. And I and I can attest to that. It's so and that is my story. And I and I wow. knew that. I didn't understand that when I was growing up that, you know, because I came from a very abusive household and I started fighting at a very young age trying to help and protect my mother that abuse and fighting became something that my body craved. And until I started to see the trajectory of the relationships that I was headed down, I said, ooh. And, and, and what I did was I started to look at myself as a common denominator in every situation. And I said, when I show up everywhere, if this continues to happen and these people don't know each other, then it's me. And that's where I started to do the work. And, and that's what, as you get older and older, some people, I'm telling you that the, the, the conversations I have, especially with some men who are stuck and 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 find outlets that just suppress the stuckisms, you know. Mm, the that, that just, <laughs> it's just really, it's just really, really sad because you know the, those habits after the you know 40, 50 years, they just become your norm, you know. And but you can change, right, Charles? Please share yes. with some of the men out there. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's, listen, I can honestly say, and I'm not self-absorbed at all. I'm just gonna say what people have have said to me, I've, I've had guys uh, that were walking around me when I was in prison and uh, they said, Hey man, because of you, I don't do this as much because I felt awkward getting drunk every day in jail around you. Cause you don't get drunk. So, so I was like, dang, so getting drunk. So before you know it, they start balancing. Okay, do I do I want to get that mental food or do I want? It's 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 the same thing, around You guys, when I came to Chef Bobette's rest restaurant, it's just certain things that you're not gonna drink, you're not gonna eat, and you already know what I'm saying, saying Tar. Like you get around <laughs> Chef Bobette, and listen, if you do eat unhealthy, by the length of time you're around her, you're gonna make sure that you you speak positive. Speak positive energy, because you know she ain't going for that either. And you want to make sure that you're eating some. You don't want her staring at you like, what you doing with that? Like, what, what are you about to do with that? But that's, do you that's what, what I'm saying? saying. Right, and that's what you were talking about, the company that company you keep. That and keep. even at 50 years old, you know, you have to read, you have to look at who's been in your sure. life. And like you said, 
who's who's a value and who's just taking up space. But I want to I want to move on to um tell us about the poem a little bit about the poem that we heard about because we're winding down. We could do this forever, but um, okay. you know you're gonna have to be one of our monthly uh, oh, come back. Have his own show. Yeah, Man, have your I own would show. You love to. Yeah, like y'all can put. Hey, y'all know y'all can call me to get on the show every day. I love this. Okay, you well, know good. That. And <laughs> I love you guys. Um, so tell us so, a little. Tell us a little bit about your um the poem. What happened? I was laying. I was about nine years into a thirty year sentence. I was laying on the bunk in jail. And I was hearing everybody complaining, oh, the food is trash. And then I got up and walked in the TV room because I was tired of listening to people complaining. And I said, hey, what are, what are you guys watching? Somebody said, oh, man, the same old trash. You know, they're going to watch the same shows over and over. So I said, God. So then I was going to go to the counselor's office, you know what I mean, to see when the next Alcoholic Anonymous group was so I could mentor that. So I said, hey, man, have y'all seen the counselor? I said, oh, man, you already know he hiding somewhere. You know, man, he ain't. So I was getting all this negative. I said, golly. So then I got on the phone. I said, well, let me call to the world, right? Let me let me call home. I called out. I think I was talking to my auntie. And uh, I listened to all these complaints. And I just said, hey, I, I got to get off the phone. So I got off the phone. I laid down 3 o'clock in the morning. Never forget it. God woke me up out of my sleep. And he said, hey, go tell them you created it. Tell them everybody that's complaining and blaming everybody for what's happening in their life. And I started out saying this. God would never give you the power to change any aspect of your life until you own all of it. Wow. You got to own all of it. Even the part when people have done you wrong. You, you want to know why? Because at the time when you allow these people into your vibration, it indicates the relationship you was having with yourself. Self. Whoa, Charles, stop. Yes, it's all about, it's because it's all about you. Yes. It's so, all about you. So every time we hit the, the you, 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 and you, 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 it's really all about the relationship you are having with yourself. And we draw that in which we are. So at that time in you, in your life, when you drew that energy that you felt like that harmed you so much, you drew that. That was part of your walk. That's part of your path. When I try to tell people, they say, oh, well, she did this and he hurt me so much and she did this. I said, well, what about your relationship with your higher power, with your God? <laughs> So then I said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, okay, well, if you got a relationship with your higher power, okay, this came on your path. So let's not even deal with the part, this person that hurt you and hurt your feelings and did all this to you was on your path, on your watch with God. How did that happen? Wow. I mean, you know, this is going on for hours, this. but we're I running know. out of time. So <laughs> great, I know. So that's, that's So crazy. listen, I just want to say this. It took me six months to write, write that poem. I wrote that poem every day for six months, and I let God give me the quotes as I was writing. I love wow. That. Well, it, it's still, every time I listen to it, it just reminds me. I thought it was brand new. No, it, he said it at your birthday party, remember? And that? see, it sounds brand yeah. new. It, it always <laughs> reminds me to remind me, you know? It reminds me to remind myself that you can change anything at a given moment. I don't care how old you are. And it may take a little bit of work, but at any given moment, the circumstances that you are in, you can make adjustments too by rewriting and redesigning. So we're getting ready to come down to our call of actions, which is we're going to give the audience some things that we'd like them to do. Is that We have three things. Is there something that you'd like them to do this week to make a change in their lives? What would you tell some of the men and women out there one thing that they could do this week. Take 20 minutes, 20 minutes, cut your phone off, no phone, no TV, and clear out your mind and see what the first thought that comes to you after that 20 minutes. It's going to take you 10 or 15 to quiet yourself, especially when you're not in the practice of it. See, the problem is we are doing 
too much listening to outside noises and not enough to our inner voice. And that's important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 20 minutes, guys. So, and we we have some here that we like to say, choose something you've always wanted to do and do it this week. Choose one thing that you've been putting off. Well, you know, I've really wanted to just do it this week. That's one call in action. And uh, make an apology to something yourself. Apologize. Ex you know, what, what do you want to say about that? Like, apologize to yourself, you know? He and that's what we don't do. We, we don't, don't forgive ourselves. Ooh, you know, I would like to add to that. One of the first things I do in mentoring, uh, I tell people you have to forgive yourself. It starts first there. Uh, people don't even realize that you need to forgive yourself because uh, yes. you hold yourself so accountable for so much and you never tell people. Oh, it's my fault that this is my fault. Right. that this. But you don't tell no one that you must forgive yourself. Now, listen, and throw it in the sea of forgiveness and put up a sign that says no fishing. You got to forgive yourself and no fishing. You can't pull it back out. Don't pull it. And, back. and that's right. And one last thing is do something physical this week. Move, move your body. I don't care what they told you. I don't care because you're 40, 50, 60, well, 50, 60, 70, whatever it is. We got we got some ages right here that are three different generations, three different decades, rather. <laughs> so we need you guys to get up and do something physical today. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So anyway, any last words for inspiration, Charles, you'd like to tell? Anything you'd like I to say? I would just like to say this. <clears throat> The hunter knows the tracks of the prey that he's hunting, but he or she must know how to cover up their own tracks so they don't become the hunted. And what that <laughs> means... Yeah, please. <laughs> is okay. we are all hunting for something, a goal, a position, a job. But covering your own self is covering your spirit, your mind, and your physical health. Because... If you don't, there's a whole medical field and a whole bunch of pe people that are trying to charge you emotionally to go eat unhealthy things that they're hunting you. They're hunting your emotions. They're hunting your eating habits. They're hunting your career. So you got to understand you got to take care of yourself so that you don't become the hunted. I love it. All right now. Well, anyway, we just want to say thank you for that. You can follow Charles on certain platforms here we go charles silk dunn on instagram and on YouTube. youtube and on facebook so make sure you check him out charles thank you so much you know you got to come back because you man i love you guys please have me back part two, yeah, we need part three one and part two part three part four <laughs> i'm already motivated i'm already uplifted and i'm excited thank I you so, so much hey you i love you guys us. so much we love you darling thank you again all right thank you Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Well, awesome. Sunday bites oh, and titties with Chef Pepe and Tara. This life they'll help you live it. No show can do you better. Sunday bites and titties.